Uh, you can just kind of follow me around. Alright, man, let's go ahead and get this started. Yeah, I definitely came the wrong way. Huh? I definitely came the wrong way. I was trying to avoid the old box Oh, no, you did. <laughs> you did what I did. I actually failed. I come, you better grab them in the tree. Gravel ain't helping. Lucky finna hit the ground, eh? That's a lot of work if you can't get that thing. You see what I'm saying? They gotta get it right here in the middle. They gotta get it right here in the middle. They gotta get it right here You got, you got this, man. Guys, there's always something going on. <laughs> there's always something to figure out on the site. I guess a lot of the students got, they must have got lost or something, man. I don't know. Maybe I had to rethink this field trip thing. Maybe we got to meet up. Maybe we had to meet over to the school and uh, and um, load everybody up in a van. I didn't know what was all. I didn't know what was all back here. You didn't know how it was. Put the put the direction. Dad, you think they can get one of these blocks of wood and put it in front of the, the tire? Yeah, well, let's see if it gets to get first. I'll be fine. They finna get it right now, man, because he ain't got that much. It ain't going. I'm glad we brought this wood over here because this wood can actually be used to um to um, stabilize because you got to stabilize these walls. I wish I could speak Spanish, man, know what they're talking about. <laughs> how does it work with you? Uh, well, he's, it... he's, he's telling him to just back it up. And he's put more give, give gas. Uh, I can understand what they're saying in Spanish, but I can't really speak, say it back. So you, do your girlfriend talk to you in Spanish? Sometimes. She does. So why won't y'all just go a couple of weeks and you just speak? Huh? Just hold don't even engage with you unless you speak in Spanish. I bet you'll learn it then, won't you? Yeah. He's saying come straight back. I, I, I Oh, what y'all doing? 
Uh, we on uh, we actually on YouTube live right now. You guys be careful. I might need to go get my mask. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna be able to see me. Get me out of the way. I mean, I don't know why it's so cold up on the hill. That thing right there looks nice, man. Man, it's warm. I like the way you got that little pocket right there. Yeah, it's warm. Yeah, that's, that's like the north thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Mr. Cameron, put your glasses right there. Yeah. Oh, man, you can do what you want. You know what? I'm saying on the video. It looks bigger. Huh? It looks bigger on the video. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, no, this is a big house. Oh, this is a big house. Yeah, this is about 3,500 square feet. Oh, that's just the main level of the upstairs. Yeah, you got the whole basement. You got about 2,000 square feet in the basement as well. All right, we got this. Typically, what they want to do is they want to take that form and sit it right there in the middle right there. You see what I'm saying? That's what they want to do. Because, you know, those things are heavy, man. You got a lot of weight. I mean, you got a lot of They're going to take a lot of more. I just, I just, I have a boy to pick up one of those right there. And uh, that's a lot of work, man. This is labor and shit. What you guys are looking at right here, uh, it's probably about $25,000. What, this? This labor that they can do right here? Yeah. About $25,000 worth of labor. Okay, you still got me, Matt? Now, this is my son right here, by the way, guys. This is the guy y'all be seeing on the videos and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and this is uh, my man Jackson. I love halfway on, halfway off. There we go. Proper, proper head take. Hey man, if anything come up on that, uh, I got one or two people maybe coming up on the live stream. They may be typing some stuff yeah, in, so let yeah, me know. Right Somebody already asked? Yeah, that's you. Did they ask anything? No. Okay, they, you guys on the live stream, you guys can actually type in your questions. And McKinley will read the questions, and then I can go ahead and answer those questions. And I know we got a lot going on. It's kind of loud, and this is a good time to come out here where you guys can actually see this stuff actually happen. Okay. Because here's what they do, all right, what has happened is, we're going to put a door right there. Okay. So we got to have those, all right, the question is, she wanted to know what they're doing over there. What he's doing is he's drilling some holes and put some more rebar in there. Okay. Because we're going to put a door right there. And so we got to have that rebar uh, right around that door frame. So what he's going to do is he's going to he gonna drill in, drop that rebar in there. The best way to do it would be to epoxy it in. So that's, you know that, I don't know if you saw that video where it pops it, and then you squish it in there, and that's cold, but that's going to hold just as good because the concrete's going to be all around. What are they building the form for? Huh? What are they building the form for? Well, the form is going to be built for the, um, for the basement wall. And you can see, if you can kind of zoom in right there, you see, you see how high that rebar is? That's how high the basement wall is going to be. So you guys see I got about two feet, two to three feet of dirt that's up above those forms, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that dirt and we're going to grade all that dirt in and we're going to backfill it. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be smoothed out, so we're actually going to drop the grade of the house a little bit. Does that make sense? So where will the front of the house be? front of the house is going to be right here. This is the front of the house. Um, and you know we got setback requirements as well. So. If you look up there on top of that hill, we had a little flag up there on top of that hill. That's where the house corners are set. And the house corners are set by the surveyor. The surveyor set those to make sure that we meet setback requirements. And then what's going to happen is the surveyor is going to give me a, a printout of where the house corners are going to be. Once I get this foundation in, we're going to take that and send it to the city. And then the city is going to, they're going to okay. It has to go through zoning. Zoning is going to say okay. 
The house you're, you're, is in back. In your trustful city, it's trustful city here. This is your trust me. What about hey, those? Hey, Jenny. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing, huh? What about the green indicators on the rebound? Well, that's letting those guys know that that's a foot. Uh -huh. See, here in the city of Trustville, you have to those those rebars have to be one foot apart. The tic tac toe. I think I was talking about that. It has to be one feet. Now, the code says code says you only you have to be two feet. The city of Trustville has adopted an ordinance to say that we want to beef up our rebar. We want to beef up our foundation wall. And so they increase the they they increase the code here in Trustville. So they got to be one feet. So what I had to do is that's why it costs a little bit more to do it here because now I got to pay for additional rebar. Cause see, those guys gotta do double the amount of rebar now. What about first down? What Oh, that's a good question. Let's 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 go through here, guys. Let's let's go through the footing. All right, guys. What you're looking at? What you're looking at is the footing. Now, remember what I told you, guys. I know it's kind of hard to hear, but remember I told you guys that the footing has to be continuous all the way around. The footing has to be one feet high and about 18 inches thick, okay? But now in our cases, we had a bucket truck. The bucket on that truck, it was two feet wide. So they dug my foot in two feet wide all the way around, which is actually better. But that means you gotta pour more concrete. So it cost me a little bit more money. So now the footing gotta be continuous. Right here. Notice, back I want you to get over here. You see how the grade of this right here lot goes down like this right here? Y'all see how it sloped like this right here? So what I end up having is... Barclay Circle. Huh? What's the address? Huh? 56. Address. 5610 Barclay Circle. Okay. Uh, trust me. Now, y'all see how that grade, you can see the grade of the, the... Up above is field dirt. Below, you see where the hard dirt is right there? That's the natural grade in this right here lot. So it goes all the way down. Notice it's going down to the slope right there, right? So when I get right here, when I get right here, what that means is I had to dig deeper for the footing because you have to build on undisturbed soil. You can't see the guy when he came out here. I wish y'all was out here with the inspector. What's up, guys? When the inspector came out here, he had what they call a probe, and that probe it had a little it had a little had a little point at the top. So if he could push that thing in the dirt, that means we had to dig deeper. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, you got to go to where you can't push that probe down anymore, and then that means that you can build on top of that footing. So in this case right here, you see how the slope go down like this right here? We had to dig almost seven feet down in order to get undisturbed soil. I know it's cold, guys. Y'all on this hill, man. Y'all all all right? <laughs> Dude, hey, hey, you need to get one of these right here. I don't, need, I don't feel anything other than my hands. <laughs> Um, so what happened guys, Yeah, you guys asked me about the footing, so what happened is we had to go extra deep here and we ran out of, we was running out of concrete guys, so what I told the guys to do, I said make sure the footing is continuous, now over there we're actually seven feet deep, and those guys were trying to fill all that up first and work their way this way, and I said no man, let's make sure the footing is continuous because what you don't want to have, and we had ran out of concrete, that means I would have to stop. I would have to stop the footing right here, and I would have to stop it over there. And then what would have happened is we would have had to come back and pour it another day. But what that would have done, guys, is that would have created what they call a cold joint. Mm -hmm. and, and and so you would have had you would have had a crack. Really, we would have had a crack in the concrete. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because if this would have cured, and you pour the other stuff on top of it, now you get you know they cured at different times, and you don't have a solid joint there. And that would have been a problem because, see, when this house settled, you want the entire house to settle as one unit. Now, I don't care anything about that retaining wall. See, you got that, you see, you see how, how, go, what a truck is, how it kind of goes? Yeah. That's a retaining wall. Yeah. I told them to go ahead and pull all this right here first, and we just had enough to get the retaining wall too as well. And now, are you going to have to dig the mud? The mud that's, that's come back on it, you're going to have to dig that out when you go to do the... the that's got to come out of there. So what I'm going to do is, when we pull those walls, I'm going to go ahead and pull this on up and get it even with this right here. Now, when I, I got to come back to it again, now, I had to put a slab on this. We talk about the flat work. Mm -hmm. So the slab guys got to come in and do their thing. So they'll pull the slab on top of all this. The slab
crab might stop right here in the middle, right here somewhere. Okay. And so the footing got to be continuous all around. Now, here's what we have right here. If you look right here, don't fall off in there. You might fall. You might. You might. Not you might get the hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, these right here, this is where my deck, my deck got posts. So we got to come out here. We're gonna pour some concrete here. And some concrete in these holes here, and this is where the post of the deck is gonna come here and hit these, hit this right here. Now, what this homeowner's gonna probably end up doing is, she gonna probably end up doing, we're, we're gonna have a patio out here. Now, notice how we don't have any yards right here. Not this end, no yards. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something just like this over here. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put a, a geo, that's a geostone wall right there. Um, and it's geostone, it's just cheaper to, to use those stones. And, and typically, the, the best way to do those geostone is to kind of make it go in like this right here, like the pyramids. That way it, they hold up a little bit stronger. So we'll do something like this right here, right here. So we'll give her a little yard. Um, but also, this is a very, this is a very difficult lot, guys. This is probably one of the toughest lots you can, um, you don't, you don't want a, a new builder out here fooling around on a lot like this, okay? Because not only that do we have to deal with, the reason we cleared this out, because this is what the, Field lines are gonna go for the septic. Okay, so it's on the septic. It's on the septic. And see, we gotta put the, we're probably gonna have to put the septic tank over there where you at, Janet. Yep. It's gonna probably be right there. And the field lines are gonna go down here. And the thing about it, you can't cover up, see, I can't take this dirt on top of the field lines. Right. You can't do that. You have to dig down about two to three feet deep and set all those field lines in there. So, a lot of that stuff we got to get, you know, all those bushes down there, that's got to go. I got to clean all of them. I got to clean all of that out. And I actually got the, um, the septic guys going to be out here in the next week or two because I want to go ahead and get that set so we don't be fumbling around with the septic tank and all that stuff toward the end. Good question. Hey, man, you guys hit me with all, you, you guys hit me with any questions that you have, man. All the rocks we're gonna take these rocks and use them. We're gonna use them somewhere on this landscape. Yeah. Um, on this landscape. Yeah. See, y'all see those rocks up yeah. there? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna take those. Okay. We're gonna. I mean, this is. I mean, rocks make some really nice looking landscaping. So we we're gonna utilize those rocks. Do you got a question? Are you gonna because... take out the hardwood trees as well? That tree right there is leaning, guys. It's supposed to fall. He gotta go. Okay. So we'll 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 take him out. He's gonna go ahead and fall. He may fall and. It may get down to the road. It may be falling up to hit, uh, tall enough to hit the road, but he's gonna come out. That tree right there is about thirteen hundred dollars to get it out of here. Yeah, that's that's cheap. And uh, yeah, and I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and here's the thing: I may just have them to cut it down. Yeah. And just saw it up and leave it there. there you go. So we don't want to haul it off, you know, because that's that's just too much money. And that big boy right there might have to come down. He may be dead. Now the reason I think he died is because uh, we. Uh, we probably disturbed some of the root system when they were down there. Uh, uh, we probably pushed some of that dirt. See some of that dirt, guys. When you when you dealing with those trees, you can't cover up the trunk of those trees too much. Cause if you do that, you kill them. All right, that's something else to think about. All right, now we're gonna kind of let's kind of roll over this way. Maybe, guys. Let's let's go back over here. I want y'all to try to jump over this stuff. Now, notice I got right here on the ground. I got these yellow marks. Yeah. Anybody can think of why I put those there? I got a yellow, I got a yellow line right there and a yellow line over there. Remember we were talking about that septic tank? Wipe it. Huh? Wipe it. You know, Say it again? Wipe it. I could hear you. Wipe it. Correct. We got the um, the plumbing from this house. I put a I put a four-inch sleeve up under the footing. So it goes through the footing so my guys don't have to core drill. My plumber would have to court drill that, and he had charged me about eight hundred dollars to court drill. So I put that pipe there. You know that way I don't, I don't have to pay that eight hundred dollars. I put one on this side, one on this side because I just might put it over there. You know I don't know, so I put one on both sides, and so he knows where to come dig to get down to that sleeve. So all the plumbing in this house is probably gonna come right here. Does that make sense? All right, so we got that in. And this right here, y'all understand about the footing, right? Now right along here, we have uh, we 
have these dials. Now these dials, y'all see what they're doing. See these dials are, are what they call it reinforces the concrete. Y'all right? <laughs> now you know if you look down, if you look down here now, you don't see any uh, the concrete goes down, it actually is all the way down in there. Concrete yeah. deal. Yeah, you got concrete go yeah. all the way okay, down so up in there. Goes, I was curious. Yeah. I said, well, it goes all around. That that dirt just goes on top of it. Oh, okay. All right. No, we got concrete. We got to continue this footing, guys. Okay. All right. uh, and that's what I was worried about. And I'm gonna tell you something. When you guys doing a job, you just go ahead and plan on just like what is it? We pour this thing tomorrow. I'm gonna be here all day. We're gonna pour this right here. All these walls are gonna be poured tomorrow. I'm gonna be here all day. To make sure it's a continuous pour. <laughs> 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 but, but, but here's the thing, guys. I'm gonna tell you something, guys. On footings and walls, you got to get that right. Concrete, guys. You know what this concrete? Concrete, you gotta get that right. You can't, you can't, because this is the foundation of the home, man. You can't mess this up. Now, if we were framing, we can mess up the framing. And I can make the guys come back and get it right. And if we tear it out, I just charge them. I just what they call I do what they call a back charge. I back charge them for the labor. So now I gotta pay for this right here because you messed this up. Now here's the thing, guys. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a mean guy. If it's fair, it's fair. I make sure it's fair. If the guys mess up and it's something that I didn't go over with them, then that's on me. I gotta eat that. But if it's something that I specifically sat down with them and said, hey, you need to do it like this, 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 this. And guys, anytime you're doing any kind of construction, you guys better have a plan. You better have that plan. And your plan, you better you better know your plan better than any of your subs. You better have that thing figured out. Because if you don't, they're going to do what they want to do. And you're going to hear about it from the homeowner in about a year or so. And that's what you don't want to deal with, guys. You don't want to have to go back. You don't want to have to go back to a site that cost me money. All right, does that make sense? So what we're going to do is now, look at this right here. I want you guys to see this right here. So we got this right here dialed in, so we have the walls coming right in the middle of this right here. See, they had to kind of adjust these right here over so they didn't fit right in the middle of the wall. Um, Y'all can see the natural grade of the soil right here, right? So what's going to happen is, we got 10 feet, we do about 8 feet, it's actually on the ground right here. Then we do about 6 feet, and then we'll do 4 feet, and then and then all the way down 2 feet. Notice that the walls, we do the walls in 2, two feet increments. And now, here, I'm also putting the brick ledge, so we got brick ledges too now. So the walls are 10 feet, and we're going to step in a little bit in certain areas, like low enough, to make sure we're under the grade. So that's where we're going to put the brick leg. That's where we're going to stack the bricks. The bricks are going to be stacked on the walls. Does that make sense? And then we'll come on. What's, what's funny, man? What are you laughing at? <laughs> I thought you were laughing at me. Feeling the yay, man? All right. And we're going to come around. Notice how we tying these suckers together, guys. So every last one of these things right here, we got them tied up. They'll tie them up all the way around. Yeah, like I said, this right here is labor intense. This is, this is a lot of work. But why is this one untied? So this right here, they're going to put it up. They're going to leave. He doesn't have anything to put up. I guess they're going to put it up. Well, he's going to have to dial in right here. Gotcha. They, they got to, just like they did right here, they're going to have to, they're going to have to drill down there. And that's another thing. I think, I actually did a video. I think they got to drill down there. Yeah, they got to drill down there. 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 Now we got this thing inspectors. Here's the thing, guys. We got a lot of things going on here. We got the inspectors. These guys got to. We got to get this done today. It's gonna get inspected at nine o'clock in the morning by the inspector. Once it get inspected, I got my line truck gonna come. They call the line truck because we're gonna we're gonna put these walls. Here's the thing, guys. We can't use the boom truck. See, the boom truck is the big guy that y'all know raise up, and you just kind of drop it down. That's easy to work with. Well, we can't boom over these trees, and we can't get the boom truck up in here. So we got we got to bring what they call a line truck in. What that means is I got to do what they call a mako mix. There's a mako mix, so that means the concrete gonna cost me more money because it needs to be able to go through those lines. They got to pump it through a line. And so you're gonna have about three or four of these guys. That thing is heavy. I tried to pick it up last time I was out here when they were doing the footing. 
And that thing is heavy. You gotta have about three or four people moving that line. Very heavy. So then what that do is that pour all this right here. And while they pour, they're gonna have a, have a vibrator in here. They're gonna be vibrating that concrete just to make sure they have something like this. Now, I actually made sure that I got my utilities turned on up front. So we have, um, I got power to this, to this site. So if the guys need, to, if they need to use a, um, if the vibrator that they use is electrical, well they can, they can plug it into that, but they can also plug it into my stuff I got out of here. So you gotta make, that's another thing, make sure you got your utilities on point, okay? There's certain things, we're gonna go to, through the erosion control stuff, but there's certain things you gotta make sure you got on site before you start building. You need to have a porta pod because and there's a reason for that, guys. You don't want these guys to have to leave the site. You want them to come out, you don't want them to have to go to Hardy's or something to use the bathroom and stuff like that. And not only that, you got neighbors right here looking out. You don't want crazy stuff going on. Oh, they got to use the bathroom. They use it right there, uh, uh, you know, behind the trees. And stuff. You don't want all that stuff going on. Go right there to the porta pot. Matter of fact, I'm gonna have them to pour that porta pot and put it up here. Uh, once you get things going. Um, you want to have your utilities on. You also want to have your water on. I got water on this house because in the event that they may have to use some of that water to slow that cooling of that concrete down, we got it right there. We got a water hole. And not only that, guys. The only way I was able to get here, we wouldn't have been able to sit here right now because it rained the day we was trying to get this footing in. It rained like the day, uh, two days before, and it was too muddy to actually dig. So what I did was, since I had power, I took, I had a pump at home, you know, one of those little, little pumps that you get at Home Depot. I put it, yeah, no, it was just a regular pump, water pump. I hooked it up to my water hose, and I got pictures of it. I put it out here, and I sucked all this water out of here, and got it out here so that the next day, it could dry out so the guys could dig the footing. Oh yeah, you got, you got, here's, here's, here's what you gotta understand, guys. My job, guys, is to protect my home. My job is to save my home in the money. That's what she, that's what they paying me for. So, if the longer it takes to this right here, now mind you, while we're building this right here, my homeowner has to pay interest every day. See, interest accrues every day. So they have to pay interest every day this job goes undone. So the, the bottom line is, I gotta hurry up and get to the finish line, but now I gotta do it so that I don't jeopardize the site now. I can't jeopardize the construction. But what I do have to do is I have to do what I can do within my power to make it to where she, the homeowner gets in here as quickly as possible so that they don't have to pay interest. Interest is a monster. And so that's that's our job as a builder. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what these guys are going to do, these guys are going to get these now. Mind you, they smell, there's some foam stuff that they're going to spray on these things. It smells like diesel fluid. I don't know if they, I don't this, this right here is what I'm talking about, guys. This is, this is the, um, so you take this thing right here, notice they plug it up. They plug this up, and while they pour that concrete, they drop that thing down in there, and this, and this right here is, this right here part right here, this is vibrating and it's mixing that concrete. Does that make sense? And that's what you want. Now, they do have some stuff that they're going to spray, they're going to, they're going to have it in a little can, and it's going to smell like diesel fluid. And they're going to spray it on all these forms. Because what you don't want, this is what you don't want. You see that right there? If they snatch this right here off and you get this right here on there, would that mean? Well, this is not as bad, but you don't want to be real big clunks because now you just suck that away from the wall. What is it, build up? Yeah, that's just, that's just concrete. Yeah. That's what the concrete, that's why when they took the forms off the concrete, this portion of the concrete actually yeah. stuck. You see what I'm saying? You pulled it off the wall. Kind of like creating that honeycomb or something. There you go. Well, no, actually, the honeycomb is going to be created because it's not vibrating. It's not mixed. Yeah, right. You got to mix it. But this right here, you don't want to pull off any of the concrete. You see what I'm saying? Because now your concrete is not as thick as it is. Now, this is not bad. This is, like I said, if that happened, we don't have no problem. But sometimes it can get really, really clunky. If you got, you know, maybe an inch or two, you got a problem. Um, now they can waterproof those walls because the next thing's gonna happen is once they get these walls up, we're gonna they're gonna come back in here and they're gonna waterproof. And they're gonna put that black tar stuff all the way around. You guys seen that? They're gonna put that on there and then they're gonna put some um 
They're gonna put some padding. They're gonna put the black tar on there. And they're gonna put some padding on the back of that black tar. Can y'all guess what that black padding is gonna be for? Water protection. Huh? Water protection. No, no, no. The, 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 the black tar that they put on there is for the water protection. But the padding, what do you think that's gonna be for? It's gonna go right on the back of the wall. That padding, I didn't, I didn't understand this right here, guys. It took me a minute to figure this out. The, the padding is going to be so when they do the back, you don't want any of the rocks and stuff to, to chip away the black tar stuff for the waterproofing and get in there and, and, and knock a hole in the wall, creating a leak, possibly place for the leak. So that's what that's for. That's right. So that's what we're going to do. So they're going to come around and we're going to do that. But now they tighten this thing up. And what I'm going to do is, at the end of the day, uh, early in the morning, my job, I come through and I check everything. I check to make sure that when they get these walls up, number one, I make sure that these things are right in the middle of the wall. Okay? They're going to have some little things that they're going to put on those walls that's going to that's gonna hold them together. Then I make sure these walls are break. I brought that lumber right there from another site. And what they're going to do is they're going to they gonna, they gonna stack this up against the wall to hold the walls in place. So that when they pour this, because when you start pouring that concrete, these walls get heavy yeah. and they start moving. You don't want them to move. Because see, they'll have, they'll have lumber all in the back of here, from right here to right here, just bracing these walls together when they don't move. Let me ask you this, Mr. Starwood. Let me get off well, the subject. If there wasn't any more houses in this neighborhood, how would you have determined from picking this lot <laughs> what's going to be your front side and this and this? Well, well, number one, the um, the covenants determine that. Uh -huh. Every neighborhood, every planned neighborhood. Now, if you was just out in the country, like I built houses out in the country, man, you can just go out there and just start building. You can turn the front this way. Yeah. Matter of fact, my mama did that one time. Well, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your mama hey guys, we was in a, I was in a, we, we lived in a mobile home. I lived in mobile homes all my life, guys. And my mom and my mom, when my mom and dad divorced, my mom bought a, uh, she bought a mobile home. And she turned the back of the mobile home to the street and the front to the woods. When uh, she, she, she said she wanted Evergreen to, well, we, we're talking about that. <laughs> Okay. She wanted where I'm from. But, uh, but but you have some people to do that. Yeah. But it's your preference. It's, it's your it's preference your at that name, point. But not if, not a company, a, yeah, now, if you're in a subdivision like this, yeah. uh -huh. this is a planned subdivision. They record, what they do is, they send a plaque to the county, or to the city, the municipality where you at. Once it gets recorded, it tells you all the rules that's going to happen in that subdivision. It, it outlines everything, how far the house is going to sit in the road, where the front is going to be. Now, in this case, this right here, is a, this is a corner lot. So I could face the front here, or I could face the front there. Now, the reason, when I looked at it, me and my excavator came over here. And guys, you know, I don't sit here and just make all the calls. Me, the homeowner, and the excavator came over here and we looked at it. She wanted to face this way. But I just had to make sure that it wouldn't be cheaper to face it that way. See, once again, I'm looking at her money, yeah. right? And so what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, what's the best way to set this house to save her the maximum money and give her what she wants as well, right? And so when we start looking at it, the slope over that way is just too steep. Yeah. So she'd have had a front yard. She'd have been looking straight up at the front yard. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this was the better, even though you you know you still got a slope in the front yard, but we can work this a little bit better than if we set it over there. So if you're on a corner lot, you can set it that way. It has to be the front has to be facing toward the street. Oh, okay. But now, like I said, in the subdivision, guys, there are covenants and restrictions, and they outline everything that you got to do in this subdivision. How you got to do it? They, I mean, everything. And you got to follow that thing like the law. Because if you don't, i tell you one thing that you don't want to, and I know we're getting off on a tangent, guys. One thing that you, wanna, you don't want to deal with in a subdivision is the HOA. The HOA of a subdivision has more authority than the bank. Homeowners Association. The Homeowners Association can foreclose. If, if you're not doing stuff according to the HOA, they can foreclose on that house. In most cases. Depends on what municipality you're in. They can actually get in there and they can shut that thing down. If you if you got cars and stuff parked out in front of the house and they say well, we don't this is what we don't want, 
that that president will come to you, hey, you need to do it like this, 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 this. And if you don't do it, they can make proceedings and file things, and they can shut everything down that you got there. Keep you out your own house. Let's shut you down, man. Here, here in the city of Trustville, Ow. and this we're gonna talk about the rose control guy. Um, and I met the guy over here. Um, the Trustville inspector was over here two days ago, and these guys come here once a month, once a month. And if you don't have, um, if you don't have your erosion control in place, they'll shut this site down. They won't do another inspection until you get this stuff ready, until you get that stuff right. Now guys, when I used to be at the city of Alabaster, I used to do that too. I, I ran code enforcement, they call it code enforcement. And typically, usually the code enforcement is a police officer. He has a badge. And he has a little bit more authority then the building, now the building official has a lot of authority too. The building official has just as much authority as the police chief. He can kick you out your house. If you're not following, yeah, there's certain, certain things that he can do. And as a matter of fact, when I was a building official, I got a badge. I had a badge, just like a police officer. People thought I was a police. Um, but they have that right. The, 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 the job of the building official is to make sure everything in that municipality is safe. So I'm making sure, that as a building official, he makes sure that when somebody comes in this house right here, the reason that the inspections happen, guys, is because when people come in this house, they need to be safe. And it, need, it needs to be constructed safely. This is what all this concrete and all this stuff and all these inspections is about. Safety. That's it. Um, so what's gonna, this, that's, that's gonna happen, guys. So we're gonna get in here, we're gonna get this done. Like, when I come in here tomorrow, guys, I'm gonna make sure it's braced, that's number one. And I'm gonna take my tape measure. I'm gonna measure every corner. I gotta make sure they got it right. I'm gonna make sure every corner is right. Every this right here link has got to be right. We, I'll be able to see everything because why am I doing that, guys? Why well, am I making sure these guys are forming these walls are 100% correct? It makes square footage. Square footage too. Square footage, man. Well, once again, I'm looking out for this homeowner. If something's leaning in or something ain't quite right. They're not getting the square footage that they're supposed to get. Especially if now if they get more square footage, that's gonna cost me more money. If they get less square footage, they're not getting what they're supposed to get. You see? So my job is to check. My job is to make sure. I, 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 I should have had the plans with me. But my job is to make sure that everything is consistent with those plans. That's the name of the game. Make sure everybody everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And we're standing in the middle of the basement right now. Yeah, we're right? right in the middle of the basement. Now, here's what I got. Here's what's going to happen here. Um, once they get this formed up, matter of fact, I had to call the trucks off. I had three trucks coming over here, and it was going to drop gravel right here in the middle where we're standing at right now. So they, what's up, buddy? So they was going to drop that gravel right here, okay? And the reason I needed that gravel here is because next week we're going to be doing our slabs. All right, so what's gonna happen is that gravel is gonna be spread out here so the plumber can put his stuff in the basement. He gotta run some things, cause we got, we got a couple of bathrooms right here in this basement. We got a bathroom that we gotta put, the, we gotta put his stuff in the basement. Well, I'm not gonna finish the downstairs, but I wanna have it ready for it in the event that they finish. You see what I'm saying? So we're gonna stub out pipe in this downstairs so when we come back and finish it, it'll be there. This is my wall guy. This is my footing and wall guy. And waterproof. Yeah, footing, waterproof, and wall guy. Correct. So the next gonna be your frame. No, 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 no. My next my next guy is gonna be that slab. Oh yeah. See my next guy, the next guy. Yeah, the next guy is gonna come out here. I mean, these are these are good questions, man. My next guy that comes out here is gonna be my plumber. Well, when we get this right here gravel out here, I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my slab guy. He's gonna spread it for the plumber. He's gonna spread that gravel all the way through out here. He's gonna spread about four inches of gravel throughout this whole area right here. And then my plumber's gonna come in and he's gonna put his pipes in the gravel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then my 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 um, slab guy's gonna come back and he's gonna. 
He's gonna put the reinforcement. He, he got places, guys. We got we got low band walls down here, so we're gonna we're gonna dig. Say, for instance, there's a low band wall right here. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper where the gravel is. We're gonna dig deeper so that so the concrete can make that area. That's called a grade bait. So we're also gonna put rebar. Then we're gonna have, especially where the steps at. Steps are always gonna be low bearing walls. Yeah. So then we're gonna have that, and then we're gonna come forward. The slab guys come forward. And so then you'll be once we get that ready, then we'll be ready to frame. I have my framing package out here. And now also, um, before the framing guy, I'm, I'm having to requote lumber package. Guys, this is a crazy. These are some crazy times that we're living in right now. Because what's happening is prices are changing. Prices are, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, man. It just it's not gonna ever work to your favor. I can guarantee you. Um, this, and I told my lumber guy, so look at him, man. I'm shopping. So you make sure you get it right. Cause I take, you know, I mean, we gotta shop people now. But you know, I, I probably, you know, something I probably won't even shop. I may not even shop him because I, this guy, I have a good relationship with this guy, my lumber guy. This guy. He has never, and my son, you, you remember him, don't you, Matt? We sat down in the restaurant with him. But this guy, man, he makes sure that I, my lumber package is good. I don't have to keep picking up the phone. Hey, man, I need some more two by four. I need some more of this. I, I need some more of this right here. This guy gets my lumber here, and he got it right. Hey, Mr. Stallworth, but you've given a quote to the homeowner prior to uh, uh, taking on the, yeah. and the lumber and all that was in there, right? Lumber package, lumber, lumber package and stuff like that, um, in most cases, I don't think on this particular job it's not, but lumber packages now are, I let it be budget item. Oh, okay. So that means is, if I go over, that's her, that's the homeowner's responsibility. Oh, okay. If I go under, she get that money. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, So right. if the lumber package is, let's just say it's $60,000, right? Yeah. And the lumber guy, it ended up being fifty-five thousand. Well, that homeowner gets a five thousand dollar credit. But now, if the lumber, if it was sixty thousand dollars, and lumber package ended up being sixty-five thousand, then she pays uh, whoever the homeowner is. They pay five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay. I don't know. And on this particular house, I don't think we did. Um, I don't think we did the lumber. I think I had the lumber package set. But now the house is on build. And now the lumber package, the ones that I'm doing forward, the lumber package are becoming, are beginning to be uh, budget items. Yeah. Because I don't know how this, this economy is very strange. Yeah. We're living in some strange times. And not only that, it's hard. Guys, I had to have everything in this house. We got everything picked out. Everything. Garage doors, windows, all the stuff that you pick out, all the plumbing pictures. We ordered everything. As a matter of fact, I'm ordering everything. Everything ought to be sitting here waiting when it's time to put it in. Garage is uh, right here. It's on the side right here. Correct. So they come here. We're gonna have, you see all that, that big pile of dirt right there? That's going to be gone. That's, that's, that's gonna, we're going to take a lot of that and push that back over here to give her the backyard. A lot of this dirt right here. See, we're going to cut out. You see all that dirt right there? Oh, that's coming off and going, that's going to be backfill, and we're going to use that to slope the front of the yard so the front of the yard is not so steep. Now, all those trees now, let's, let's, let's kind of walk around here. Anybody got a yacht? Jennifer, you saw how heavy those things are? <laughs> I just want to, this is what those guys are picking up, guys. Yeah. Man, that's hip. I mean, <laughs> think about it. Here's the thing, man. <laughs> These guys are picking those things up like it ain't nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Two, three, four of them up outside. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, he, he picked up, um, he picked up two of those. Now, like, man, let me grab one of them. I grab one of them, and I don't hold them. You know, hey, guys, this is, this is, this is labor intense. But they get paid well, guys. Don't, don't, make no mistake about it. The, the, what, the, what they're getting paid, look, look how he holds them. Look how he grabbing those right there. Now, there's something else, too. Guys, there's something else, too, that's going on here. These guys have lift them so much, they know yeah. how to lift them very efficiently. Exactly. So don't, don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it takes some strength. But what I'm saying is, when you start, I mean, it's, just, it's almost, I don't know if you guys ever lift weights. When you lift weights, and I've been taking my son in there, we've been lifting some weights. Um, we, we're going to get, we're going to get beefed up again. 
But um, when you're lifting weights, it's the way you lift it makes a big difference. When you get used to lifting, like I just drop the weight on my chest because I don't want to use all my energy taking it down. So if I just drop it on my chest and push it up, I got more energy to push it up. Yeah. Well, these guys, look at that. He, he, he's grabbing those things. He's got a system figured out. Um, that's how he carries them. He got, well, it's not as big as these right here, but he's carrying them things right there like it ain't nothing. Do anybody have anything else on what we're going to do here in this concrete part? Anybody else? Jennifer, you got anything? So this part here, when you put it on, it's actually going to level everything out. Correct. And then now, what, what's going to happen on the gravel now is we're going to put some six mil poly plastic on top of the gravel. Now, typically, guys, when I'm pouring a, when I'm pouring a slab, when I'm having my guys pour the slab, I use what they call fiber in the concrete. I use a fiber mesh. So it's, it's like these little old bitty small fibers that they put in there, thousands. You can actually see them if you look real tight, real, real, real hard on them. But I had a fiber in here. It actually strengthens the concrete. Okay? Because here's the thing. I don't like what they call the, uh, the mesh wire. I don't like the twist of the concrete because in order to do it right, you have to float it right in the middle of the concrete. So concrete is about four inches oh, thick. Yeah. So it needs to be raised up about two inches off the ground, right? Well, what's going to happen, guys? Y'all know what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is when the guys pour the concrete, they're going to be stepping on it. They're going to be stepping on it. They're going to be pushing it down. Now, it'll still hold, but I think the fiber in my is, is, a, is, a, is better to go. And now, like, once again, it costs more to do the fiber. So it's probably about another $20, $20 a yard more for the fiber. Does that make sense? And then this concrete right here is, um, this is 3,000 PSI. So 3,000 pounds per square inch concrete. Now, when you add this rebar to it, you remember that? You remember we were talking about that in class? It increases the tensile strength. All right? So instead of 3,000 PSI, this, this might be up to almost 5,000 PSI with this right here reinforcement in it. Now, because I'm doing the concrete, because I'm doing the reinforcement at one feet apart instead of two feet apart, that's increasing it even more. So we just really, really beat up. Now, there's something else that people don't know here in the state of Alabama. You don't have to have a rebar in your footing. Because of our seismic location, you don't need rebar in the footing. But it's a good idea. Does that make it's, it's a very, very good idea. And would it help, like, I'm thinking like tornado stuff is any you know at least making it more secure well not now tornadoes or high winds or hurricane stuff i don't think that i don't think it'll deal with the i think it's more or less structural the weight of the house yeah. is the reason that you want that rebar in there and that's why i put it in there now i'm gonna tell you something about those tornadoes y'all remember that tornado here i built a couple of those houses back in um is it over in, um over by there was a kangaroo uh you get off on finley yeah. I forgot what they call it. I forgot what they call it. I think it's uh, there's, a, there's a big kangaroo, and you get off on. It's not really Finley. It's like an exit. It's that flying flyin J. That's oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 the flying J. That's 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 the flying J. What's right behind there's a There's a neighborhood. What's the name of that neighborhood right behind Flying J? What's that called? Uh, what is it, uh, Smithfield, something like that? No, Smithfield. Smithfield well, Mining, something happen. like that, North right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I rebuilt. I somebody that lived there. All right, yeah, Jennifer. Ruben owns that cafe down there. Yes. All right, now Jennifer, yeah, I rebuilt. <laughs> I rebuilt two of those houses yeah. right behind there when that tornado hit. Yeah. And I, guys, I saw basements taken out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would thought, I'm talking about basement now, mind you, Mind you would think the basements were blocked. They weren't, they weren't like this right here. But when I saw basements uprooted out the ground, that kind of took away everything. I said, I, I don't think you can, I don't think you can engineer around a tornado. I mean, you may, you may be able to, I just don't, I think when that thing came, man, I, I just think it was, it was destined to get whatever it was gonna get. Yeah, I mean, that thing, so I don't know, I mean, this may help with that tornado. I know we're gonna put a storm shelter in here. So right here we have a door, that little area right there behind, beyond, up under the stoop. There will be a storm shelter. But I still don't think, I don't know, man. That's what I'm Are you using like the family safe for your storm shelter or are you building? Actually, have one. Let's kind of walk. Let's look at it. 
And while we're going, the other question too, because you mentioned, you mentioned, oh, come on, girl. you mentioned block, like where the other house is. Uh -huh. Why poor concrete were you using this, the concrete block? Well, you know those blocks are poor. Um, now, if you get the block, the, the, and they're just not as strong. They're not as strong because they put together with mortar. And now, if you if you put rebar in them, like we got here, because you can you can you can put rebar in them. But then, once you put the rebar in them, Jennifer, you can't you can't you can't stack them. You you, you can't check a with stack them. Does that make sense? Because now the rebar has got to go zigzag. So now you got to stack them on top of each other and run your rebar straight down. But a lot of cases they fill them. That gives you a lot of strength. Like the building that we're in, over at um, building G, the one that I'm in, yeah. they fill those those blocks. Yeah. But they just, nothing you're gonna get is gonna be as strong as, uh, you, you can't stack blocks and get the strength that we have here. Now right here, you can see we're gonna have a door that's gonna be right there. Now, guys, this is the, uh, this is what you call the front stoop right here, right? And right up above that front stoop, we're gonna have about 14 inches of concrete on top of that stoop. And that concrete is going to be poured. I'm going to put a little metal pan up under that stoop right there. We're going to have some bars there. And what's going to happen is when I pour my driveway, I'm going to have them pour the stoop. Does that make sense? Or if we can get it, we can get it up quick enough, I can pour it. Well, they probably won't, but they, they probably won't have it. I wish I could do it when we do the slab, but we won't have it. So when I do my driveway, I'm going to pour that stoop. And so you, right here, you're going to be encapsulated with number of countries. Right in that little area right there, we see that hole right there. All that's going to be concrete, concrete all the way around you. With the exception of the door. Now, that door costs about $800. I think a little bit more. Than a metal door that you put on there, you can get yourself in there. I wouldn't want to do that. I might mess around and get stuck inside my own house and can't get out. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, but it, it, no, here, here's what I'm afraid of, guys. I'm afraid I might have been I get in there and, and like a, a, a piece of beam or something fall right in front of that door, and I'm trying to push it open. I can't get out of it, and I'm screaming. And... The door opens. Oh, that's even better. Thank you, Janet. Sure. Thank you, Janet. I'm, I'm sitting up here trying to come up with ways not, not to, it, it not to pay for a door in there. How you, yeah. do, how you doing? I'm, try, I'm trying not to get a door. Yeah, the door opens that, that makes sense. So, on the inside, I mean, I actually have, like, you know, chairs and water. I got a whole store kit inside. Do you? Okay. That's, that's, that's what you want. All right. Uh, you guys have anything on this right here? Any, anything? Uh, Jackson, you think anything? Okay. Let's kind of, um, so everybody got the storm shelter. We talked about that, right? Mac, you got anything, man? Problem solving. Would you, would you, how do you like problem solve out of situations? Yeah, how important you, is that? You're on a site like this right here. Anytime you build anything, you better be a problem solver. I just name, guys, what I do, what I do as a contractor, guys, my job is I just problem solve, guys. That's all I do. That's all that. If, if, if everything went right, there would be no reason for me because you could do it yourself. My job is to figure out what we're going to do when things go wrong. That's what I do. Just like when that when, when those guys were about to pour all that right there, we were about to run out of concrete. I have to look at this right here job. I have to look at the big picture. The big picture is the house. I have to see everything. Cause see, I got to deal with every last contractor that walks in this house. I have to deal with them. And when one contract, if something is wrong on, on the front part, we're going to have a big problem on the other part. So that becomes a problem. So that's what you want to think. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to think of what, where can I not have a problem? With? Okay. All right, let's keep. Good question, man. Good question. That rebar there, that's a little bit more than a foot apart. Like kind of door no, no, no. He need to, he need to put one right there. Okay. He need he need to drill a hole right there and put one right there. Okay. That's just what happened was that's that's just where. Uh, cause see, that's what the inspector gonna check. So my job. That's why, like I said, when I come back here tomorrow, I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna look right here. 
Now, coal would allow that. Because but it's only two. The, 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 the 2000, we're on 2015 coal here. Yeah, okay. yeah. 2015 coal would allow that. But the city of, the city of trust me, are fortunate to do nothing. See, they, they adopted an ordinance that says that, hey, them things got to be a football. Oh. They're going to have to, no. see, you can, you, can, you can make it even closer, but you can't make it wide. Does that make sense? Well, that's codes, when, they, when they have these codes, do they explain why it pulled apart? They don't have to explain why. They can, um, they, there's a reason why. Somebody, I'm going to tell you what happened. I, I'm, I just, and I'm, I'm speculating. One of these walls gave. Somebody had something, and probably one of these walls gave it, paid it, and somebody got hurt. It might have been here in Trustville. It might have been somewhere close. And so they said, well, you know, this has happened two or three times, right? So what we got to do is we got to beef up these walls and keep people in Trustville from getting killed because the walls are happening. This is why these codes come about. Everything is about safety. The, the only thing, and here's the thing, guys, what you got to think about when you, when I'm thinking about stuff here, you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about why. Why would they, and just like we just thought about that just then, is the intent of the code. Why? Why did they put that code there? And so anytime I'm dealing with the building official, now sometimes I'm dealing with the building official, and we're going back and forth, and he's sitting there saying, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm asking why. And sometimes they can explain to me why, sometimes they can't, sometimes they that's just what the code is. You got to do it. The council has adopted this code, so you got to do it. Um, and what I do is, like I said, now, City of Hoover, you know, I, I deal with those guys. I like those guys over there, man. Sometimes we'll sit on the back of my car with the code. But I remember back in the day, me and that, me and that building guy, we used to go back and forth. Good guy now, man. We, we talk a lot now. But we go back and forth because, I'm, hey, man, you got to explain to me why. You have to have, if, if you guys are going to be in this game, if you're doing concrete, and you're doing cloud work, you probably need to have your code book in your car. They had a, I got a code book. You go in my car right now, I can open up my trunk, they got a code book right there. My son will tell you, sometimes we go through, don't I do that? It's sometimes like a, the building official give me a hard time, I'm going, hold on, hold on, here it is right here. And I find it, and I give him a call, hey, hey, it, it says it's right here. I don't just take people's word, guys. Prove it to me. Great question, man. Great it's question. like a building Bible. Huh? It's like a building Bible. It's, a build, it's really a big safety man. Yeah. And guys, I'm going to tell you something else, too. In that code book, it's very detailed. It tells you exactly what to do. <clears throat> you don't have to think about nothing. When, you, when, you're putting the, when you're putting the shingles up on the roof, it tells you how many nails to put in that shingle. It, it, it does tell you. you got to put at least five of them in it's going to tell you everything to do. There's very, it's very far and through between that there's gray areas in that code. Does that make sense? Let's kind of go, let's look at some of the roads you control. Now, another thing that you want to do in these sites too, guys, you want to try to keep them. So, you know, I usually, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to bring the trash bag. I used to have a trash bag come on site. Um, I used to be real mean with my subcontractors, guys. I used to, if I saw paper, when I come at the end of the day, if I saw paper, I charge them for paper. And, um, but I stopped doing that, guys. I just try to keep it clean. I try to help them cut me keep, keep it clean because here's the thing, man. You don't want a site. If you're building, and if you're building, you're contracting. You don't want a nasty site. Because, see, I don't know when my homeowner's going to come over here and look at this site. Yeah. If they come up here and they see trash, then they're going to, that, that's a reflection on me. They're going to say, hey, he keep a dirty site. You know, it's just like, man, if you guys keep your room messed up, that tells me a lot about how you think. Don't take it the wrong way, guys. You got to take it the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, and here's the thing. I can go in your closet. I can look at your closet, and I can tell you how your mind operates. And that's just, and you got to keep, and, and in order for me to keep my sight moving the way they need to move, I have to understand everything there is about this sight. I have to know, and the only way you can understand and see everything is to be able to see it. And it had to be clean, so you can see things are wrong. And I guess I just learned that when I was a kid, man, we used to have, uh, I used to be scared of snakes. And and I think back in Evergreen, like people keep the room junky and stuff like that, they open up the closet, they see a snake in the, in the closet. So I just always never wanted that to happen to me. 
you know, my mom kind of messed us up when we were growing up about them snakes. You know, we used to see a snake in the room. Y'all lock it down. Lock it down. She, she start fussing at us and stuff. And she has us all nervous and stuff uh, about that. So I didn't ever want snakes and stuff to be in my room. So I made sure it was all clean so I could see everything. And then not only that, they leave all this stuff. You may find a pack of chip paper inside the wall or yeah. Yeah. Ball yeah. in the wall and all that stuff. Man, you can find like in the steps and stuff. Like when you build on the steps and stuff, they leave all that stuff. Too. And I, I typically don't, you know, like smoking and stuff. I typically don't, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not as tough on them now. I don't like for them, you know, have a lot of smoke on the site and stuff like that because I don't want the, you know, cigarette butt cigarette. Yeah, I don't want that stuff everywhere. It don't look good. So. But I, I got, that's one thing I do, my son does it too. On my side, clean up. Clean up. Keep it clean. Anybody else? You guys have anything? I had a question. I remember I was looking on YouTube. Uh, you mentioned about the trees. Yeah. Do you have to like, talk about like wildlife? Because I know it's like certain trees you can't cut down. No. Once again, the orders. Well, no, no, the covenants. Once again, the covenants. The covenants will tell me. If I go in the covenants, I guarantee they're going to have a landscaping ordinance here. And they're going to tell me what kind of trees I need to put in the front yard. They're going to say, now, I can take down trees, but they may have an ordinance to say you need to have two maple oaks or whatever, white oaks, in the front yard. And they need to be, I don't know, a 10-gallon tree. You got to buy those? Put yeah, those in. yeah, you got to have your landscaping put them in. And so, what I'm saying, it depends on what subdivision you're in and what ordinance, not ordinance, but what, what they have. Right, because I had a friend of mine that just built a house in Texas. They did give them a list of a couple of trees that they can use so the homeowners could choose which tree they want, but they only had three or four trees to choose from. That yep. they had to put that's out right, that's right. I'll I tell you another one. Over in our, I'm yeah. building a house over in Ross Bridge. You guys are going to go to the Ross Bridge. So we got one over in Ross Bridge. Um, Ross Bridge has a a lady, she has a master's in horticulture. And she, the last time I was out there, she ate me alive. Man. I mean, she, it's gotta be like this. It's gotta be like this. It's got, and, and she came out there about three or four times um, because there were certain trees they had to have. There were certain, I mean, you can't have uh, straw hay in Ross Bridge. You gotta have um, the, the, the mulch. That's what you gotta have all throughout. I mean, they just and then not only that, the the, the, the house backed up, it abutted to the golf course, so they had to do stuff out there too. I probably spent about I want to say twenty thousand dollars on just the landscape. Typically on a house like a house like this right here, I probably spent about eight thousand on landscaping. I spent twenty over there. Well, no, 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 no. Here, but here's the thing, guys. HOA, don't. Hey, hey let's 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 let, let's retract. Let, let's, that HOA, that HOA, is gonna preserve the 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 value of your property because you don't want people. I mean, like even in my neighborhood, I don't want people just parking everywhere. I don't want people doing what they want to do. I don't want people putting up a house that don't look like everything else in my house. You know, and they got a blue house and I got a brick house. You know, their house is blue, like for real blue. I guess over there, I'm an artist. I like to be they self, but I get it. Everybody yeah. And you don't want, and here's the thing, over here, now this, that guy that lives right there, he's the, he's the, um, he's the HOA president. He's the guy. No, no, no. He's the he's the ARC. Or ARC. It's called the Architectural Review Committee. He's over the ARC. So he looks at the house first. He looks at the design, the elevation of the house. He says, "Okay, I approve this right here." Well, they actually meet. They have a board to meet, and they decide whether they, they, they do it in most of these neighborhoods, like Ross Bridge, stuff like that. They do it all the neighborhoods on building right now. Um, they make sure that those houses are approved before you can even do anything. As a matter of fact, if you if, if you don't get this thing approved, like over in Ross Bridge, you, the HOA has to get a letter to the inspection department in order for me to get the certificate of occupancy. That's before anybody can even move in the house. You can't even occupy the house until the HOA sends a letter to Hoover, and then Hoover turns around and issues me my CO. Well, nothing can happen. But I'll tell you something else. If you ride over to Ross Bridge, uh, even here, guys, 
you notice there's a certain feel you get. You come here, you say, hey man, that's, you know, that's what it is. That's why you get that certain feel. When you're over in Rossbury, everything kind of consistent, looks good. Hey man, this, is, this looks real nice. I can take you over in the neighborhood, like say for instance, Smithfield or something like that, and you just, it just kind of, it, it's, it's, it's mind boggling what you see in there. You, you know, it just, you know, and that's what, that, that's the difference. Yes, sir. Well, this right here is really, really good. You know, I've seen this. <laughs> what I'm saying, now, now you do have neighborhoods where some people, well, you can do that. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, I mean, like, like we're in Birmingham City. I mean, that's, everything's different, which is nice for me, and, and for Dr. Smith. But I realize the point you're making. Yeah. And now over in Birmingham, and then they have in Birmingham, they have like a historical district. Yeah. But everything. Oh, yeah. and, 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 I'm, I'm actually, we're actually working on. Yeah, we're working on some stuff. Um, that's over in North Birmingham, over in college, college, Collegeville, Collegeville, where we're trying to do some um, historical houses. And we, you know, they're gonna be smaller. They're gonna be about 1,300 square feet. But we can just cookie cut it, don't they? We can build probably five or six of them at a time. And um, but they're all gonna have that historical front on them, and it's in a historical district. And you have to get all the approvals too. You gotta get now. You gotta get that from Birmingham. Birmingham will lock you down on that. They won't, they won't let you move anymore. You guys got to in some Bellevue area, some area Bellevue. Let's, let's walk this way, guys. Yeah, I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't seen that one. Um, yeah, I hadn't seen that one. But Birmingham is, um, Birmingham is, um, they, they're moving. They're doing pretty good, man. They're doing good. Is that what it is? You know, you see. <laughs> Where footing is, this is what your house is. This is the, the most critical part of this whole structure. This is where your house is gonna sit. It's gonna, this right here locks this house down. Like I said, it's continuous. Now, back in the day, it wasn't continuous. You had like blocks. Y'all remember that back in the day, you had them blocks and stuff and everything. And that's why you, some of the houses, if you go in some of the houses, the older houses, they kind of shifting and stuff like that. That's because certain parts of it is given and, and other parts are not. That's why they make sure that their footing is continuous. What about the bottom slab's gonna go over? How do they level that off? Well, we're gonna put a slab. We're gonna come back and pour a slab. Okay. So we're gonna have a so whole big gravel, slab. The gravel and then the slab. So the foot Correct. is more gravel just to keep else. it intact. Well, it, 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 this is the house. The whole, ex all the exterior walls are load bearing. And so all of the exterior walls, that, that footing holds this whole thing. So if, if here's the thing, this house is gonna move. Mm -hmm. It's gonna shift. But if it shifts, everything's gonna shift together because it's all locked together. This footing is, is, is continuous. So if this right here part kind of shift, it may shift a little bit like this, but it's all gonna shift together. You won't notice it. Now, if it shifts too much, if I put that level on that floor and it starts shifting too much and that bubble start moving on that level, we got ourselves a problem. So what we probably have, now this is some good soil here. You see that, that that's, that, um, that's that rock. It's kind of like rock and clay mixed in. We had a hard time digging this stuff. So this is what you want to be on. This is a good pad. Not good. This is so good. Bring in that clay, so no, 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 no. We dug all this out. So I had to excavate in here for about a week, man. We dug all this out. We. Okay. Okay. By the footing being poured at once, you know, with the continuous concrete, does that prevent when the house does shift, the cracking above the doors and all that kind of stuff? That's right. That's exactly right. Uh -huh. See, if those guys had left those cold joints in here, uh -huh. we'd have had a crack right there. And have you ever noticed if you look at the brick? Because this this whole house is going to be brick. You ever notice you had that? You have a little uh, a hairline crack that goes up, goes like this, kind of goes up like that. Yeah. That's where that's coming from. Foundation. Yeah. And the brick in this case though is not structural, is it? Brick is non structural So people, you know, back in the day, people, I'm, I'm going to be in a brick house. It's stronger as a brick. I just, it looks good, but it's not structural. What? What's structural is this footing, and what's structural is the way you frame it, the load. That's why um, we do, I do have a class on, I do teach what they call floors and walls. Those things are structural. Those things, and knowing where those loads are going to stack up, and how those loads are going to be distributed, because what you want is you want all the load and all the structure to go right here. I forgot, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. Let's, let's look at this right here. Y'all can kind of ease through the arms right here. Watch the guy's water right there. 
Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, Can anybody tell me what this is right here? Why do I got this right here sitting here? Because this right here ain't tied in with the rest of them. It's just kind of sitting right here by itself. Well, can't be plumbing. Hey guys, y'all know this right here. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. The house edge is uh, right there. The line that got popped on the ground. We got this one piece of rebar. It's just kind of sitting out here by itself right here. It's kind of going to ground, but huh? Huh? That's my ground wire, guys. This is, um, this right here, this piece of rebar, is actually, it goes down and it attaches to the rebar that's in the footing that goes all the way around this house. Okay? So it's grounded. So if I'm sitting here and I touch a, I touch an electrical wire, it's gonna pick that, it's gonna pick that pad. I don't wanna mess up my new, uh, my new, <laughs> no phase here. But I, 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 if I touch an electrical wire, I want it to, want it, cause electricity is gonna try to go to the ground, all right? It would rather pass, pass me by and go to the ground than to go through me. Unless I do this right here, unless I touch both of them. That's why I don't know if you guys ever, when I used to work with electricity, I, I kind of leave that stuff alone. But when I used to work with electricity, I used to kind of change stuff out. I used to try to, when he was like a little baby, I, I, I did some stuff in my house. Um, but I did it with, I, I, I put my one hand behind my back and I tried to work with one hand. To keep it from trying to ground me like that. Because um, if I did like this, it was going to go straight through me and go through my heart. That was going to stop my heart. And I was like, uh, cause I was, and I told, um, I told his aunt, cause she was the only one there. She was a little girl at the time. I, told, I said, hey, look, I'm gonna go downstairs and work on this electricity. If you don't hear nothing from me in about ten minutes, call, call nine one one. Um, but yeah, you, 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 you want it. That's why you can see these birds and stuff when they get on these power lines. They don't have anything to worry about because the electricity is not trying to go through them. It's trying to go to the ground. So this is what the grounding wire does. This is what you have that here. Okay, that's critical. Uh, you can't pass an inspection without that. Got anything else, Mac? Uh, let's look at some erosion control because y'all got a couple of questions y'all got to answer. I hope you guys been doing y'all tests and stuff. I've been putting reviews out and everything, so hopefully they coming up. I don't think they're doing until like tomorrow. So you lost like ten cool. Y'all will fail. What you're gonna have is when they waterproof this right here. Typically, what they do is they put some gravel in there. They put it. They, they, they take this and they put it all the around. You have a drainage. You have to drain at daylight. It's usually six inches, right? And it goes all the way around the house. And it's gonna go to daylight here. It's gonna go to daylight here. Typically, what we do is we just have a hole right here. I know why they got it there now. What they're gonna do is. They're gonna take that. When they put the walls up, they're gonna cut a piece of that and they're gonna put a sleeve. Y'all know how I got those sleeves in the footing over there? Yeah. They're gonna put a sleeve right here. And I, they may put one over there, but they're gonna put a sleeve here so they can run their drainage through it. Yeah. See, this drainage right here is not gonna go around there. It's gonna come straight out here and go that way. Does that make sense? Oh, we're gonna bury it up under the driveway and go out that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so that's gonna, see what happens is, all this water, that water's gonna come down through the ground, gonna come down, it's gonna get on that gravel. 
and then it's gonna get on the gravel now mainly those uh, you're gonna have what they call a drain tile and the drain tile has holes at the bottom of it and what happens is it drains down and the water drains back up and it goes out so you get all that water from the foundation or right up around the house you get that water away from the house that way the water's not trying to come through the wall that makes sense the name of the game is to get the water away Guys, if you get water in the house, it's more dangerous than a fire. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's what we want. Anybody else? Anybody got another question? All right, let's wrap this up with the erosion control. Now, I do have to have, um, I done kind of messed this thing up, guys. This, this don't look good. Now, one thing you're going to have is, I need, the reason I got gravel here, the reason I put this gravel here is so that, when it gets muddy, this guy, that gravel is gonna take that mud. You see that, that mud come off that truck? So that so once it takes it off, it don't get into the street and impact the the um the the, the municipal streets. So you don't want that to happen. Yeah. Now here's what I did, guys. What I did, I um I left this here. Uh, we're going to take this down in the next couple of weeks. But I left this here because this soil right here, because this soil is stabilized. Because we got, we got grass in it, so it's stabilized. The root system, everything is stabilized. So typically, you don't have to worry about siltation coming in through stabilization. So it's not going to come this way, but I am going to get me a silt fence and put it down this way too. So once we get that right there work, I just left that here for that reason. Um, but eventually we're going to put a silk fence, just like you guys see that silk fence that's right down there. And then those straw bales actually help too. So we try to keep those straw bales to keep that, keep that siltation from getting into the road. So you got an inlet right there. That inlet right there, you don't want to have an impact. Actually that inlet, when you have a, when you have a subdivision like this right here that hasn't been finished out, because you got, you got all kinds of lots in this subdivision. It's got a bunch of lots here. When you have a subdivision like this here, they typically have the inlet protectors on there. So this is, um, I don't know why they don't have them on, on this subdivision, but you usually have inlet protectors there. Okay. But yeah, I will get my erosion control. I do have it down here on this end because guys, once again, I was going to face the house this way at first. I thought about that, but then this would be better. Now you got to be able to stand back here you just come over, come over here, Mac, and just stand back over and let's look at this way. I know that sign is in the way. If you can't stand over here and see that house, you can't build it. If you can't do what, Mr. Starwood? If you can't stand right here, I'm talking about before we, before we even dug this right here out. If you can't stand here, or if, you, or if you guys turn around, look right here. If you guys, if you got a house that you're gonna build, if you can't stand right here and look at an empty lot, and you can't see that house sitting right there already, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be. One thing is, one thing that builders have, guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, vision. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people, uh, and that's why, guys, I really, I actually, my game is really the spec game. I like to build houses spec. It, it's very hard, and when I say spec game, that means I just go out, get a loan from the bank, I go build a house, you come in and buy it. That's my game because I have the, I can see those things. I've been like that all my life, by the way. But you can see that, you gotta be able to see it. And um, the spec game is a good game. The only problem is if you don't sell that house, you have to pay interest on it. And you can, you can lose, you can lose your tail um, doing the spec thing. Um, but this right here is a build job, you know, but when they showed me the plan, and at one time, guys, I'll be honest with you, man, if I saw it, I know, I know you're cold, man. I'm gonna let you go in just a second. Um, at one time, man, if I didn't like the way the house looked, I wouldn't build it. If you showed me a house and the elevation didn't look like I like it, you gotta find somebody else to build your house. Now I think it's kind of tight, guys. You gotta build what you can build now. You know, it's, it's just the way the game is right now, guys. But um, but you gotta be able to see it, man. I gotta be able to see it. Now we're gonna have a big slope. And there's a big slope. If I start from this house, the end of this house, and that, that SUV right there, to that white truck right there, that's probably about a 10 feet elevation drop. That's a lot of elevation. This is a very difficult lot to build on, but 
we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna, it's gonna look, when we come back in about a month, it's gonna look totally different. You, you'll be able to see the house then. I have, I have it framed, should have it framed up by then. But between you and your developer, y'all can come together, uh, uh, come to terms about how to build a lot up to put the house on it. The developer's not gonna fool with that. I, I, on, on, in, in a neighborhood like this right here. Uh -huh. Now, if you get a flat, like sometimes they go in these places, they just flatten them all out. Uh -huh. Typically, the developer is going to be the builder, too. Oh, okay. And the reason that he does that is because he can do it cheaper that way. If he develop and build them, but like something like this right here, usually the developer will have a couple of builders come in there and take, out, take down a few lots. Anybody else, guys? Yeah, so when you build and you turn your water over. Talking about the, the water that's coming to the house? Uh, let's, let's look at this right here. Let's, let's get into something. Some stuff right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is giving me an opportunity to see whether or not they put it in right here. This will be a better right here, guys. Um, yeah. All right. They, um, yeah. In a lot of cases, the lines, when the guys put the lines in, the water lines in, mm -hmm. they do have dirt in them. Right. So in That's a lot of cases, what you what, what ends up happening is when you turn your water on, your um your water won't come out strong. In a lot Before of cases, it comes out dirty. yeah. And so what they have to do is they do have to you have to flush it out. Uh, and then the plumber used to take care of that for me. He'll run that water, get all that water out of there. Um, but now my water should be good because they just set that meter over there. Yeah, I asked that to myself if you start seeing I mean, so close to my house you see some dirt come through there that's because the plumber hadn't done what they were supposed to do and flushed all the stuff out yeah those plum those plumbers are hey, plumbers are critical it's, it's hard to find plumbers now guys golly yeah, i'm right. telling you man if you i keep telling these guys right here these, these guys these are my dual dual yeah, enrollment cats. guys man if you guys i know i got everybody looking at y'all hey man <laughs> he tells the truth, I, I promise you guys the man, i promise you guys you guys right now I'm, my son too because he about you guys age guys if you guys embrace this stuff right now man the sky's the limit i mean quit trying to get a rap video <laughs> no nah, I'm, I'm just kidding I'm just, quit trying to dunk a basketball and trying no nah, yeah you can do that too if you can do it if you can do it do it but guys there you go but this right here if you just steady get some kind of trade i don't care what it is it could be this it could be any trade, but just do it steady and just stay with it. Stay with it. A lot of people are going to drop out the game. You just stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Guys, it took me 20 years. 20 years. Now, hopefully I help my son out because he don't have to start where I started from. He can start a little bit ahead, and then he can learn from the mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes, guys. I messed up a lot. Lost a lot of money. And I can tell him how not to lose money, but you're going to lose a little bit. When you lose money, that's your tuition. You're paying tuition while you're learning. This is the game, guys. This this is the game. But if you guys did this stuff right now, man, I'm telling you, man, I would love to, I would love to see it about 10 years from now, man. You guys are killing it. That's right. How I told houses, my huh? how many houses you built most of uh style work before you said that's it, I got it now, man. This is it. Guys, it well it took me about 20 houses. Yeah. I had to get a good 20 houses under my belt before. Building is easy for me, guys. It's, 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 it's like breathing. Building and making money is hard. It's easy to build, man. Anybody can, I can build. I mean, all you gotta do, hey man, son, do this right. Make sure you do it right. <laughs> and you watch it. But being able to make money doing this, that's tough, man. You gotta, cause everybody's, guys, everybody's trying to take money from you. Yeah, everybody, but everybody, it's, it's almost like, think about it like this right here. You put a big bucket of money right here, and I gotta guard that bucket of money. And you stick your hand in there, and I gotta, well, hey, you got too much, put that down. This is what you're gonna do with your subcontractors. Because what you said, guys, it's, it's kind of ironic that every time I build something, my subcontractors make mistakes. They build me wrong. They make mistakes, John. That makes sense, right? But why is it that every time there's a mistake, the mistake, it never ever works out to my favor? <laughs> what that lets me know is they're doing it on purpose. <laughs> now, they, they may not be, but what I'm saying is, if they get them a mistake, at least it worked out to my favor. At least half the time, but it never does. Which means that you have to watch these guys. You gotta watch everybody, and it's hard to make money doing this game, guys. 
with the concrete, the concrete guy. And that's why I tell you guys, the, one of the best things you probably could do, man, is become a subcontractor. Because if every, if anything goes wrong, no one's gonna mess with you. You see what I'm saying? They're gonna come out to the builder. Now that is a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Jack. That's a jet. <laughs> this is a nice that, neighborhood, guys. <laughs> hey, this is Star Wars. And yes, they sir. also say the homeowners trying to get in that bucket to get some money, too. They trying to get all they can from that. No, no, no. no once you sign a contract, if you do a guaranteed maximum price, yeah. it is what it is. Right. But they don't want to spend any more than that. Yeah. That's what you got to understand. They're not going to want to spend any more than what you already agreed upon. And I get it, that makes sense. Cause I won't want you to do me like that. I want you to come to me and say, hey man, it's gonna be more. And we're gonna have a problem if you, yeah. if you come back and say it's gonna be more. Yeah. You see? So yeah. they, they fair. Yeah. But the subcontractors, they're gonna, I just got some bills in. I, I just got some quotes in. They, my plumbers and stuff like that. They, hey man, it's gonna be, you know, I know what we said this right here gonna be, but it's gonna be $2,000 more. Well, I gotta go find that money somewhere. How do you manage that? Like, okay, you do all that before you go, get that money right you yeah. talk to all your subcontractors with Correct. their price and maybe a cushion price yeah. Yeah. well see the problem is if you put too much cushion in there you can lose that you can lose that job because people yeah. they're gonna shop you as well yeah. Yeah. so if they go to another builder and I've had I, I lost guys I lost a job one of my best friends <laughs> I lost the build job to him because the builder came in another builder came in and said well hey man I can do it for this right here and you know and i lost that job i put too much cushion in there so that that happens man that happens but but you gotta but you gotta control them guys too now man you you, you can't just let these guys just come in here and just throw a bill you gotta check their bills like i got i had a painter he charged me x amount of dollars and then he uh sent another invoice and his invoice was higher than what he should be paid i'd already paid him everything and all he gonna do is if you pay him he just took the money if you, if, but you see what i'm saying yeah. And if you catch it, and you are oh man, I made a mistake. <laughs> you see how it works? But if I went ahead, if I go ahead and pay him, he gonna just, he's just gonna take the money. But when I call him, oh now my bad, I double invoice you. Your job is to keep up with all that crap. You better have an accountant. I I, I do it myself, man, because I know what I'm done. I said I scrutinize everybody. Oh look, man, I'm already paid. So you gotta keep that stuff in, keep that stuff in mind. Also, with your cushion, you know, if somebody trying to go to the lower bid, they have to be careful that they go to that lower bid. Because the lower bid down the back end, they say, well, this costs you more. They still end up paying more than what you gave the first time. Now, what you do have to do with the homeowner, if I'm hiring another builder, I have to make sure I tell that homeowner, hey, look here, you make sure you compare apples to apples to oranges to oranges. You need to make sure of that. Right. And in that way, you see what I'm saying? Because some of these guys, some of these guys, are, they, they they may be lower, but at the end of the day, it's really about the same. Like with this guy, when he had this other guy to go build his house, he ended up paying what he would have paid me. Right. I had that happen to me twice. I had another builder, and I know the two builders that they dealt with too. And guys, the, the building world is like a, it's like a fraternity, I'll be honest with you. I never go, I never say anything negative about another builder. I just, I, I don't yeah. do that. Yeah. And you shouldn't do that. Because you need to focus on you. Your job as a contractor is to give those people the best product for their money. In any sub trade you do, even if you're doing the concrete, my concrete guys need to be trying to give me the best product for my money. That's what we need to be focused on, guys. This all, it ain't about me. It's about my customers. That's what it's about. Hey man, I appreciate you guys coming. Um, what's his, um, I talked to um, Steven there. He's like, man, where my boy is at? So I got you guys. I'm, I'm glad to see you guys here. You guys uh, had a hard time making it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I know, man. You, you, you got to fill that tank up now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Jennifer, you good? Okay. Well, well, can we come out here? Because I want to see how y'all. Yeah, look, man. That's a good question, guys. Hey, y'all. Now check us out, guys. You guys are welcome to come out here anytime. If you guys want, just don't hurt yourself. I do have insurance if you do. Don't don't run off with it. Bro. But yeah, you guys are welcome to come here anytime. Um, I can see you when you're here, though. 
I, you know, I can see everything that happens on this site. Um, I got these cameras, man. I got some nice. I, I should have showed y'all my cameras. Yeah, I saw the one up on the Did y'all see it up there? I saw it. Yeah, and they got solar panels, so I don't ever have to worry about anything. But every time somebody walk on this site or their motion or something, it starts to record. So I record everything that happens on my site. Don't sub, don't show up. So I don't have to drive way out here to see what other showed up. And sometimes your subcontractors will lie to you. Hey, man, I'm sending somebody, somebody out there. And I, hey, there ain't nobody out there, buddy. <laughs> I'm looking at it right what, now. What, what, what brand of camera do you, you like? Ma'am? What brand of camera do you like? It's called a Rio Link. And, and, and it, it used T-Mobile. So T-Mobile, you had to have a T-Mobile card. And uh, you put that T-Mobile card in it as a data card. And it's just, I'm going to do a video on that. Yeah. And, um, and you can just sit there. Like I said, I don't have to worry about anything else. And I just, um, now somebody steals something. I probably still won't know who it is because, you know, it, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I, can, I can actually zoom in, but you probably won't be able to tell, you know, like, you know. What about uh, the class? Huh? What about the class this afternoon? Four the morning. Oh, I, I'll be online. Oh, okay. That's why I asked you. Yeah. <laughs> kind of confused on how your thing was, because you got changed up some things. Yeah, I just, I, I reversed the two classes. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, what I do is, um, guys, y'all know I, I video record my, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of my sessions, okay, too. Okay. Um, but, but if we can't. I'll be there in person, guys. So it just, and you know, like guys, if you're getting sick, because I got one of my students sick. He got, you know, he got the COVID. And um, if you're sick, you know, just, you can zoom in. I'm doing both of them at the same time. So. Yeah, yeah, now I can, I can take that, I can take that camera, I can take the video off of it. And I can, if I, if I really wanted to get them, I can take it to the police. They can, they can fine tune it and they can see everything. They can see it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is good, guys. This, this is just the way it is, guys. Now, we are moving to another. I'm, I'm going to take it to the next level. I told my son I'm trying to take it to the next level. They got drones now. See, once I get the house built, I can't see the inside. But they got a drone that I can hang up on the tree just like that. And I can fly that drone right down and I can, I can walk through that house with you. While I'm sitting there, I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm somewhere in Montgomery, and I can sit there and I can fly that drone, and I can look at everything you look at. So that's where it's moving, guys. The way it's gonna move. Yeah. So technology is changing the game, guys. Technology. It's gonna. It's gonna get to a point to where, this is what I really want to do. Don't put this out on. I don't care. People can grab this right here, right with it. I want to be able to build a house and another step foot in that house. Do everything to technology. So I just sit here. I don't have to send a superintendent out. I can measure everything. I can check out well now. I don't know. I don't, that's gonna be very tough to do, man. Because there's just certain things I gotta do. That's the goal of mine, but I don't think it'll get there. Until you see it, I mean, I mean it's possible. Yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go I gotta go pull the tape yeah. measure. I just gotta yeah, I gotta, I gotta get about twenty in your belt. You know why I do that? You got a point there. That's what's moving though. That's what's moving. All right, I think we what, what time is it's almost time. Yeah. So hey, are guys. We, we're online on Monday or Yeah, I mean class? my guys yeah. we'll, we'll be yeah, in class. Right here, uh, yeah, yeah, but there's there'll be lecturing on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll lecture money and then I think I got the other field trips too. Yeah. Now I did put a video, I'm put a video up uh, to finish up that other section. It's just so long. Uh, that that's seven five, seven nine, five oh one or something. It's just I'm gonna have to video that one. Uh, cause we need to move on. All right. Okay. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys for coming, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for coming. And until next time, we ought to have this thing almost framed up next time. Man, don't go trying to fall down that hill, buddy. <laughs>